let's discuss flying the aircraft. Starting with the basics, the transmitter. The stick on the left is the throttle stick. This will control your motor movement. As we move the throttle up, your motors will spin faster and increase the speed of the aircraft. The right stick, moving up and down, controls the elevator and will control the pitch of the plane moving up and down. Moving side to side with the right stick will control the speed of each motor individually and allow the aircraft to turn. When taking off the aircraft, you can choose to take off from your runway, move your throttle stick all the way to the highest point, and pull down on the elevator stick. This will cause the plane to lift upwards once it's reached enough speed. To bring the plane back down, simply push up on the right stick, and the elevator will cause the airplane's nose to point down. Decreasing throttle will lower your speed and decrease altitude as well. Another takeoff method is the hand launch. Hold the plane in your dominant hand and with the throttle near full or three quarters, give a firm toss into the wind. The stabilization should help the plane to climb, but as soon as you can, get your other hand on the elevator stick and pull up and be ready to make your turn. Be sure you're flying in a clear, open area and fly in circles in front of you. Avoid flying directly over your head or behind you uh, or in the sun, where those are all ways you can lose orientation. Fly for about nine minutes or when you first notice LVC, or low voltage cutoff. With this aircraft, low voltage cutoff is displayed as a pulsing in the motor or intermittent throttle control. If you ever experience that, it's time to land and charge the battery. When landing, whether landing on a paved surface with your landing gear, or if you chose to take those off and you're doing a grass landing on the belly, line up with your runway, decrease throttle, and use your elevator stick to bring the nose down towards your runway. Before you touch down, pull back on the elevator stick to bring the nose up just a bit. This will provide a nice smooth touchdown. After you've landed, keep your transmitter powered on, throttle stick down, and go retrieve the aircraft. Immediately, remove the battery from the aircraft. If you have another battery, install it, and you're ready to fly again. Otherwise, use your transmitter at that field or wherever you like to go ahead and charge up the battery again. And once it's finished, you can take another flight. The Duet is an ideal place to start to get a taste for the hobby, earn your wings without breaking your budget. Some other helpful items I would recommend with your Duet. You can't go wrong with an extra battery. Once yours runs out, you can always just throw in another fresh battery and you're ready to keep flying. Also, these USB chargers by eFlight are really fantastic. They charge very quickly and they'll save you double A's from charging on the transmitter. Another great tool from Horizon is the RealFlight software. Available for download from horizonhobby.com or Steam, it features hundreds of different planes and you can fly in different wind conditions, different locations. It is just a whole lot to offer in one package. In summary of the Duet, 
It is a lightweight, stable aircraft that flies very easily in smaller locations, such as a gymnasium or a park. Because of its small size and lightweight nature, no registration should be necessary. Avoid flying it too far away where you could lose sight of the plane and avoid flying in high altitudes where the wind speed may be much greater than what is on the ground. 